workshop three. Um, sorry about the very slight delay. We're actually not doing too bad, despite the rain, late arrivals, changes to the programs, and some cats and, and, and buttered toast. Um, so uh, it worked out that the, what was going to be a workshop, we're going to try our very best to actually make it interactive. Our speakers are very keen to make this workshop interactive, but as you can see, this is a big room, and actually I think more people than planned have stayed behind in the room. So that's not a problem, but, and, and mostly uh, what I'm really excited about is that we are going to hear about both about the support that Charlotte Foster from Plunkett Foundation has given um, th this group and other groups that want to own their own community shops, community um, pubs, why not? But, but mainly, we're going to hear from two Pauls who've come as a, as a duo today to let us know about the actual history of Hudwell Community Pub. Um, Plunkett support a lot of organisations through um, yeah, achieving the transfer and the ownership of assets. That may be a little bit unusual, maybe your, your smaller size um, um, assets, but, but really they are so important to the community and this is why this is called Assets of Community Value um, and I will give um, the introduction to Paul and Paul from Huntsville Community Pub. Do you...
Next slide. Could you say that, Paul? You have to think of this in the context of a small village, 100 houses, 250 adults. And we were going to go to them and say, well, it had been, the report had been bought for 400,000 the year before, and then it went bankrupt. And we were going to say to them, well, we need to raise about 300,000 quid, just like that. You can say, well, that's going to take them to say, good, when you write your own piece of paper, it's very good, but when you say, how are you going to actually do it? That's why we met as a small group firstly to try and uh, look at the, uh, the, the, the risk, you know, and, and how we combat uh, negativity because uh, if you think of a small community, say, oh, it's about £1,000 per adult, you know, some people have got £10. So it, uh, that was the, the challenge we had. Okay, so the, we decided to make an offer to buy the pub and uh, what we did, we put a formal offer in because there were no offers that got in for the pub and we were concerned that uh, the bank that owned it wouldn't even talk to us. May, in fact, decide to sit on it and remain empty as an asset on their books with no, no, no benefit to the community whatsoever. In so, fact, if, if you remember, Paul, we, we, they said because they stupidly, these were the banks, stupidly had lent the, 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 this couple £400,000 for a uh, business that was worth about 275, 300 at the most. They worked really hard and there was no way they could ever pay the way. And, and it, it, they went bankrupt. Then the bank said, oh, you've got an asset worth 400,000. We said, you haven't. You haven't. <laughs> and and they, we couldn't even speak to them. Couldn't even speak to them. They just wouldn't contact us. Yeah, so, so they, they wouldn't talk to us. So in the finish, um, Paul is um, contacts in, in Local council and so on in the press, Stockton and Darlington Times and the Northern Echo, and said, Look, the community is trying to find a pub, the bank won't well, even talk to us. And uh, they, they got in touch, anyway, they, they, the reporter got in touch with the banks and um, uh, said, Problem we got in the community. Next day we had a phone call and they said they'd uh, accept our offer to purchase. You know, so, so we got to that stage, uh, and okay, we know we can buy it. So, how are we going to go about it? Before the cooperative, we decided to form an IPS, Industrial Problem in Society, because one thing that we were keen on was that it was going to benefit the whole of the community. We didn't want individual people having a big share, uh, a large asset in there, which they themselves could control. We were determined that it would be a community uh, asset and everyone in the community who bought a share in was entitled to one vote uh, within that society, whether or not they put 500 pounds in or 5,000 pounds. So there's no, you couldn't buy opportunity in, in the book. Everybody was on the book. Okay, so then we worked on stock pages to invest. Sorry? Sorry. Don't want me my kind. Okay. <laughs> Well, as you I'm not used to this. Okay, so we then worked on grant applications, sought pledges to invest. So, launch and prospect is January 2010. What happened? Throughout January, we uh, got pledges, people started sending in money, deadline of 5th of February approached it. We had a deadline of 5th of February put, us, put on us by the bank. Um, the amount of money that we got pledged and coming in, uh, we were still £40,000 short. Two, two, two things came to our mind, you can see from that. Keith on Yorkshire, they'd agreed to convert £20,000 loan that they said they'd give us into an equity purchase, £20,000 equity purchase. And at the time, Rural Access to Opportunities Grant, we were hoping to get maybe 10,000 from that. We were told there were money in the kitty, spare money, they had not allocated anywhere else. And we got 50,000 pounds. Could not believe it. So by the 17th of February, we got enough funds to buy the pub. 17th of February, the state agent got the keys and some hands. Next day, we went up the pub, unlocked the doors, and lit a fire. And the empty shell. Village to come back to life. Can I just comment on that as well? 
And we, throughout this period, we have excellent coverage in the local newspapers, the BBC, particularly Time Teams TV, which was, uh, uh, they just came and filmed everything that the BBC came with a sort of a theme, a story that they wanted to do. Papers were excellent. When we couldn't contact the bank, it was the local a reporter, who, because we were dealing with a middle company, uh, and we couldn't contact the bank, and uh, she got on the story, and within four days, I get a call from uh, this bank in London, said, uh, we, we, we hear you, you're so to so and so, and uh, we, we've received your offer for the pub, uh, and we're considering it. I said, oh, that's great, because I've been trying to contact you for nine months, and we haven't been able to get through to you. Uh, and they said, we're making a decision tomorrow. And they came back and said, uh, it's yours. Or, there's a price on there. <laughs> 209,000. for something that yeah. was a 400,000 asset, supposedly. Okay, so the next couple of slides, just the power of community involvement. You know, um, because we wanted, uh, uh, it's not just a pub, we wanted something extra, as Paul mentioned earlier on. So we set about clearing half acre of land, we've got 10 community allotments on there, all furniture donated for the pub, and we secured what we could from whatever people were willing to offer it to us. Uh, a lot of work went on cleaning the pub, project managing the refurbishment. Myself, I got involved in getting plans done to do alterations, and I project managed the uh, building work, relocation of toilets, opening the bar, all the construction work there. And we continued fundraising and publicity. Uh, just stepping out, but people working, this is, this is what it took. This went on for about six months. What's that, volunteers? All volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> It's a complete shell, there's nothing to be imagined, so they take it everything. Yes, yes, yes. So our aim, as Paul had said, was we wanted more than a problem, it's a community asset. So we haven't got a village shop that had closed down years before. So we've got a village shop, selling supplies, this is what we wanted. A small library, library service, mobile library services closed down. Internet access. We've got wireless access uh, internet for up so that people can use pubs get yeah, a lot of walkers. We're not too far off the coast of coast. Um, and we've got a lot of visitors in the area. The allotments at the back, we have a um, good acre of ground at the back, that half of which can be used for allotments and we decided that would provide food, bed, community, pub, individuals, whatever. And also an information exchange for the village and tourists, you know, so it was a focal point. Now, the pub was officially opened on the 12th of June by William A. who had just been appointed foreign secretary at the time, so uh, when we did open it, we had all the men in black suits for there. Seven foot six, double stuff. Yeah, so, but, but he, he, he took time out to open it. Uh, and we said that he is an investor. And he is our local employee anyway. So he likes a pint. He likes a pint, yeah. We probably will do that now. Okay. So we did it, you know, from getting the keys in the February to officially happened in the June, like four or five months. And we did it, you know, so that's what we did. Instead of demanding the loss of the pub, we did something about it. Can I just comment on we've got this fifty thousand pounds and that was just before we bought it, we had a lot of in our case anyway. A committed team with a good combination of skills, I think if you look on a prospectus, uh, people from different backgrounds combined to form the committee, if you like, or formally a board for, we are a limited company. We have lots of publicity, we saw that, we had TV programs, you probably saw the Dales as well, with Aid, Ed Aid Edmondson doing work from there. A commitment to working together, um, Having a financial model to fit the times, but we decided to go the IPS route because we thought that was the most beneficial route for the company. 
and we got a lot of support from Cooperative UK. And bottom one, having an attractive investment to get one year. People talked about security in the previous. It, it is a risk. But we, we thought, well, people's money is going to be safe. They've probably been on the market for about four hundred thousand pounds. We bought it for two hundred and nine. As as a as a private residence, if it was delicensed, it'd be worth probably at least half a million. So the money's secure. There wasn't a big risk there. So that's what that's what it means. George and Dragon belongs to us all in the community. Those are the people. But where are we now in July 2012? We have 200 shareholders. Total investments 252,500, fully subscribed. We, we've drawn the line at that. Uh, if people do take the money out, and it does happen occasionally, uh, bereavements, people leaving the district, we have a, a waiting list of 20 potential investors at the moment. We have a successful little shop. It's gone beyond what we started out. Although the shop itself is run by volunteers, without the volunteers it wouldn't have worked. It's about 10 foot square. Yeah, the smallest shop in the UK, we believe. The event was productive and we've also had a community orchard put in as part of the Diamond Jubilee celebrations nationwide community orchards we put in and we've got one of those. We have a thriving pub and business. We have nothing to do with the business. We own the pub. We have tenants running the business. It's their business. We have an active library, a small library, it's the bookshelf, but at least it's a library, the mobile library's gone. And one of the things we do on the local parish council too, so I thought it'd be a good place to start to, to, to put parish council information where people have some easy access. We have, we have a village community notice board, but we actually put the stuff into the library so people can go in, sit down, have a pint, cup of tea, whatever they want, and they can bring themselves up to know there. We have plans at the moment to extend the dining area because the business is doing quite well. And we've recently paid a 3.5% dividend. So anybody who's got any money invested has had a return of 3.5% for the second dividend. Just explain that. What the, the dividend of the 250,000, say, that we've got shareholders put in, the, the rent that the tenant pays at the cost afforded 3.5 dividend It's always inspirational to hear you speak, both of you, because you, you, you have achieved so, so much. And you're a member of both Cooperatives UK and Locality, aren't you? Yes, you, 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 you span all those networks that, that people are talking about because you have inspired us all as well. And what's going to happen now, because we've got 25 minutes, actually probably a bit less than that, um, the two poles have devised a small exercise to get some of you thinking about your projects practically. And we'd like that to happen at the back of the room without any mics, you'd be happy to know. Um, and um, so if, if you would uh, please gather around, I think that back corner of the room, those of you who want to go through the exercise with the two polls about your community project and what questions you probably need to think about before you get to their point. That's one thing that's going to happen. And I'm going to invite Charlotte Foster and Catherine Darling from the Plunkett Foundation up to the front here for a Q&A session on how they help groups like Plunkett and what sort of things they may be able to um, inspire you with and help you with if you have a project. Does that make sense? We want to have the front of the room doing Q&A at the front with us and at the back of the room with the polls. Is that okay? We've got about 20 minutes for this. Um, enjoy the back of the room exercise. Right, 
morning, everybody. I'm Charlotte Foster from the Pocket Foundation, and I'm the community advisor for um, Yorkshire. West Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, Cumbria, Lancashire, and also um, further afield, Northumberland. Um, I've done a little bit of work in Derbyshire. And my role is to really facilitate and help groups get their project off the ground, ground which could be a community shop, community library, fresh, swimming pool, um, all sorts of things. Um, I'm Catherine Bell. Um, so what I do is I'm a media communications officer, so I work in the central office and where my work comes in is I work as a Charlotte to hear about things that she's doing on the ground and then I will kind of talk to the local like, press, the national press and um, attend conferences and kind of talk about things on a, on a national scale as well and just to explain what Planky Foundation does. We um, support rural communities to take control of the issues affecting them through community ownership. So that will be um, cooperative pubs, community shops is the, the one we're best known for, and there are now 280 across the UK. Um, so it's a really successful model. Um, we help to inspire communities to do that. We provide them with help and support through um, advisors like Charlotte. So, any questions? Can, can I start and then I'll, I'll be the micro over, might as well. Um, how did you help uh, the community shop idea, which is a tiny but beautiful little shop uh, happening at the community pub uh, in Huntswell? How, what was your support in Huntswell? Right, first of all, the little shop. Um, and one of the things we did, we ran a competition um, standing in the shop, which was um, opened by uh, the celebrity chef uh, Rosemary Schrager. And we said, gosh, this must be the smallest community shop in the country. So that's the first thing I rang Kat and I said, this will raise awareness about the shop. And my role really is, I always say, I can't parachute into a community um, because it's, uh, it would be wrong of me to do that as a community development worker. What I do is I go in and I'm a sounding board, a facilitator, someone who can listen to the challenges and the limitations and the barriers and the problems and then try and come up with solutions and practical ideas. And we have um, a whole load of free advice sheets that we give out to people, um, which can be adapted for opening a shop or for um, another community ownership project. So really, um, I spoke to the group, all volunteers who um, wanted to run the shop, and um, we talked about stocking and uh, what sort of things that would they have a lot of local food, um, and it's 10 by 10, isn't it? Absolutely, but um, it works. Um, so really, it's about just helping people have a vision. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Have, have people got any questions for Charlotte and Catherine? Okay, I'll start moving around. Bear with me. Sorry. <laughs> Do you mind introducing yourself before you uh, ask the question? Hi, I'm Helen Jackson. I'm Business Development Manager for the Baker Consortium Trust. Um, the organisation's been going about 10, 12 years. And I've actually just joined them very recently, but I do have a, a long background in managing community sector and social enterprises. Um, we, our main project at the moment is that we lease um, the greenhouses, which were once put, that which actually still belong to the council, and we have a very long-term lease for these greenhouses in which we um, run a variety of projects, largely to do with people with mental health issues, but. A, a, a sub issue around actually growing stuff. Um, the fact that they are actually leased as opposed to owned by us, yeah. does that preclude connecting it with you and drawing on your help? Not at all, no. Right. Um, in fact, delighted to hear about your project, Helen. Right. right. And we've worked quite closely with Growing Well uh -huh. up at Sizer. Does anybody know about Baron with Growing Well? Mm -hmm. um, where they work with people who were recovering from um, having experienced mental ill health yeah. or physical ill health. Yeah. And we also work with Rhubarb uh, Farm, who were on the news, they were on the television this week, in fact. Um, talking about how the money for the Olympics had detracted from community projects. Yeah. Um, also, Great with Grace, which is a, a cooperative, industrial providence society and Quaker business, um, they lease, um, uh, growing well leases from Sizer Farm, which is yeah. actually a national trust now, and it doesn't preclude you from yeah. our support. Um, in fact, we definitely would be very interested in, in doing whatever we can to help. Great. If I can just add a, an allied question to it, 
with another hat on. I'm also a borough councillor and a member of the local cabinet. And I'm aware that one of the things we're looking at as a council is our vast range of accommodation spread out across Rossendale. Right. And there are ways in which the consortium could be interested in possibly becoming involved with that accommodation. So there is also that business of supporting um, a social enterprise as it expands right. what we do across different projects. So I'm good to talk to you. Yes, and, and one of the things, and again, it's back to not, not so much plunking, but our facilitation role, that we can signpost you to people like Growing Well, and Growing With Grace and Rhubarb, and um, we can say, can you uh, do a study visit, a sort of seeing is believing, and go along um, and, and see, you know, and learn from the experiences of other people, because they've obviously been through certain steps um, and jumped through hoops, so they're always very willing like the shops, all the community pubs to say, this is our story, this is how we did it, how can we help you? Does that answer your question? And also, while I'm walking to the next question, um, Plunkett have got a stall up out in the exhibition room, so you can definitely come and ask them more questions afterwards. Do you mind introducing yourself? Hello, I'm Judith Brooks, I'm from Keaton Town Council. Um, I'm really interested in the panel with the Huntsville Community Pub, how the tenancy was first set up, um, are the tenants some kind of partners in the enterprise, or are they paid a, a salary? When did they, what did they actually live on at the beginning when there wasn't any money and there wasn't anything coming in enough to pay them for the first few months possibly? Uh, because. Um, it would be of interest to people to know how that little bit was bridged over and what happened. Right. Um, and are they local people or are they part of the national franchise? The tenants. Jackie um, how is the tenant of the pub with her mother. And um, I met them and we actually went to visit um, Middleton Science Community Shop with some of the other members of the pub group. Um, because we were looking at obviously the, the potential of the shop at that point. But um, I'm sure the two calls will, will be able to give you more in depth information, but I can tell you that they are tenants who pay rent to Huntswell Community Pub Limited. Um, and so they are and they are local um, and they are fantastic. I have to say Jackie is just one of these people that you meet and we feel she's a real public in the type. In fact she she was working at a I think it was a restaurant before she came to Huddersfield, but she's a really good publican because um, she knows people and she knows how to make them feel welcome. And she's also very behind the, the whole community ownership uh, ethos. Um, so her and her mother, her and her mother um, live above the shop, so to speak, and um, they get very involved and want to be part of the village. And I think it was a question of when. Uh, the um, management committee advertised, they interviewed, and Jackie and her mother definitely fitted the bill. I mean, things like, they, they, she's not about pigs, they've got pigs in nearly allotments at the back. Um, does that help you a bit? I mean, the two, the two calls will definitely be able to give you far more information, but you're asking... There's 200 people in the village, roughly, yes. Is that children? That's everybody, yes. So, I can't see how that pub can make Well, it does. It's the pub with a view. Um, first of all, the role of the press. Secondly, empowerment through community ownership. And um, that's what the localism bill is going to give everybody. It's going to give you more power to the right to buy, the right to be, the right to challenge everything. But um, it, it's, it's also the tourism, the local economy. It's keeping the pound within the local economy. And, um, you know, the shop is run with volunteers, but the pub employs staff. And I've been there, actually, with Peter Couchman, the chief exec from Plunkett. We had a, a meeting there, and we had to queue. We had to wait to get a table. That was on a Tuesday. Because um, it's, out, it's outside. It's, it's, it's not... Huntswell is not a place you pass through, you have to go there, but they've made it a destination pub. And like any business, a shop, a farm shop, can be off the beaten track, but, and, I mean, they've really, Jackie will, she's done Facebook, she's done social media. I think it has, you know, they've worked on the national 
press, they, you know, they really used the local and national press to their, to their benefit to the point where, you know, yes, it's a small village of 200 people, but they have shareholders from across across the world who have put money into it because they they believe in, in the cause, and um, that's something that yes, you know, it is a small village, but it relies very much on the fact that people get behind it, they support it through, you know, having shares in it. Um, through visiting it, it's a destination pub, you know, it's a beautiful remote village. I was just going to say, as a, I'm an off-cumbent to Yorkshire because I'm Cumbrian actually, so I'm, my husband says I'm a second-rate Yorkshire person. But I remember going to Hudswell on a Sunday morning and it was about 30 days from the deadline and there were about 20 of us in the village hall and they were saying, you really do need, you know, to get there. And um, about four days later, one of the committee of William said, you know, we've had people turning up with, with envelopes with money. They've heard about it on the radio. Um, one gentleman said, I live in York, I just, I think it's great, and I just want to give you some money. Um, people from um, America who feel that by being a, a shareholder, they actually have got a little bit of Yorkshire. Yeah. So. Thank you. I think I've got another question from the gentleman, and then yourself. Hello, I'm Philip Rice from Desborough Community Development Trust. Desborough is a small town of about 10,000 people, about 140 miles south of here. It's an outside of the area that you mentioned. I was wondering if you've any experience of projects uh, for acquiring community assets without the support of the local council. We, we have a conservation area in the town which is basically a large factory from, from the shoemaking industry of years gone by. It's been derelict for some time. Its, it's state is worsening, and uh, it is a conservation area designated by the council. But they now want to send it to something like different say Tesco's. <laughs> we want to lock it down. <laughs> uh, basically, we want to acquire it to to to, to turn this into mixed usage, uh, to go to sort of development. Um, I think we have obviously experience with working with communities like yourselves. Um, recently, uh, we've been with been involved in a project called Village SOS, where we um, travelled up and down the country to do just this, to talk to communities who were in um, situations like, like you are, um, and working with people where it's not always a great relationship with the, the council or, or you know, at any of the stakeholders. And what, what we say in that situation is Plunkett exists to try and facilitate widespread community engagement to try and help people like yourselves open up the conversation. So I think um, without you know going into too much detail into, in your situation um, now, um, Charlotte and I will be available at the stand where we can have, have another chat. But um, you know people like locality, um, like Cockatoos UK, we all exist to try and um, work with communities to make it as smoothly as possible. When we see community projects working is when everybody is engaged. You know, that's the number one thing that we say is the success rate. You know, community health shops, they have a 98% survival rate. Um, and that's when when it doesn't work is when not everybody is engaged. So yes, we do have experience with that and we have to get it. We work across across the UK, yeah. So we'll have an advisor who will be able to work with you. Um, yeah. Thank you, Catherine. I'll take a question here and a question over there. I'm so sorry about this. Let's try again. Maybe I can just shout. Maybe. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Kate from Coin Street, based down in London, we're a development trust. Um, and just something that you just said just made me think. Um, I'm really fascinated by all of this community share stuff, particularly, and I can see how, I suppose, I can see how it works much more in rural communities, maybe than in urban areas where you have got lots of different parts all over the world. There is, there is, yeah. Um, but I suppose just something, you were talking about how many different investors there have been in the Georgian Dragon from all over the world, which is brilliant. Do you think if if we get more and more community-owned pubs and community share issues, which I think everyone probably hopes that we do, <laughs> is it going to get harder to actually raise that investment? I wouldn't say so, no. I think one of the most successful community shares I've ever seen is Ford Hall Farm, which is run by somebody called Charlotte with her brother. Um, 8,000 shareholders, and um, they bought the farm, didn't they, literally? Um, and I can, we can give you a, a case study on that. 
Um, and I think it's going to become more the norm. Um, I think, you know, we, we should be going back to being able to, um, not rescue, but take responsibility. Rather than just being, it's like this gentleman was saying, I think we have to sometimes say enough is enough. Um, and, and, and I do think things happen through empowerment and knowledge. There's education and there's information. And I think that it's time now for the community to say, everything's going our way. And it would be nice if we had the money and the funding. But um, this is where community share issues can really help. Um, I remember going to Nenthead, again, sorry, quite rural. Uh, Nenthead is in uh, Cumbria. It's the second highest village in, in the country. And they, did, they needed nine, ten thousand pounds. Um, and it's a very small, it used to be a lead mining village. But they did it and um, they're renting the old reading room um, from a group of people in the village and it was £10 a share and that means everybody can, you know, it's, it's one member, one vote. It's very democratic too, if, if you go for that particular type of legal structure. I think that's model. the more people understand the, the, the model. You know, we're at a place now where um, people are aware of what cooperative means and what community ownership means and, and how it works. And the more and more we see great examples of that, working not just in, you know, kind of uh, one-off inspirational examples, but it becoming the normal way we save the things that are important to us, more and more people will realise, yes, we can do it in our community. We don't need to rely on support from, from America or, you know, we've got it, we've got it here in our community. So I think it will get easier. Mm -hmm. Just uh, there is a workshop on community shares and no doubt a lot of information about how to do it. There's guides, they're free to download, they are probably free on the cooperative table. Um, it's all been done before, use those those things. I think I may only have time for one question, but you, you have seen the people, I'm sure they'll be happy to talk to you at the store. I do apologise. Thank you. My name is Hugh Massey, I'm one of the founder directors of the Usman Trust in Newcastle. But in a profession, I'm an architect and a planner. And we get involved with very small communities. You, know, you mentioned about uh, Roman Huntsville, I think we're right on the top of it. Now, the problem in a lot of rural communities seems to be that there's a lack of critical mass. And putting the thought in the, the, the tale of people in the, in the Yorkshire Dales, you know, the, the residents coming in to the Dale to work, and the, sorry, the, and people who live in the Dale coming out to work, it seems a very typical one. How, how can you integrate in this community ownership affordable housing or self-built opportunities in, I know there's a planning interface, but to get that critical mass of, of the villages to, you know, what the new planning framework is called sustainable, you know, get away from this category B thing that we don't have for, for many years, is, is that something which, is, is it, the Plunkett can be of assistance of and indeed find examples of? Thank you. Um, yes, um, Plunkett is working with um, people like Castell Housing, I'm not sure if you um, having their um, sustainable, affordable um, community housing. It's about integrating it all into um, into one, and, and it is a very typical, as you say, very typical uh, rural, not problem, but but just how, how it is. You know, um, Charlotte will tell you about um, life in it. And at Crosby Ravensworth in um, Cumbria, again, sorry, I'm drawing on, on examples that obviously I know of, I'm delighted to say that they bought the pub. They, they've done social housing, and um, I can't say I can't have, but yesterday they heard from Village SOS, they've got 35,000 towards um, opening a community shop now in the pub. Um, and I was fascinated as to why all this was happening, but actually I, I shouldn't have been, um, I suppose at a loss to understand, because if you go to Coniston in Cumbria, um, um, which is, they've got a, a co-op, um, they've got lots and lots of social enterprise happening, um, they've got um, a creche, they've got um, a service for older people, they've got a museum where I think they want to have Bluebird. Um, and they, they, I, I heard a councillor talking, I think she's called Anne, um, at uh, Rural Action, what was Rural Action Cumbria? Is that right? Um, uh, it's changed its name recently. But um, she stood up and talked about social enterprise um, and how you can integrate it and all work together. And it is about connecting, I think, what's happening, whether it's you know me putting someone in touch with Growing Well or um, putting someone in touch in London uh, with a people's supermarket or going down to Keithley and saying, you know, if you just move along here and have a look at what's happening there, um, it's, it's 
bringing it all together, really. Um, but the social housing, again, I think that's another way forward, um, keeping young people in the village. You know, if you take Kettlewell in the Yorkshire days, 90% of the housing was holiday cottage. Um, and it was, it was really difficult. Um, but, you know, I speak to Doug McClellan, who's, who's the shopkeeper there, and actually, you can turn it to your advantage. Um, and he's decided now just to make the most of it with, with, with the people that come on holiday. Um, and try to make them part of the community so that they don't just come and stay once um, or have a holiday cottage and don't get involved, but get really in with the community. Thank you, Charlotte. I'm afraid we're going to have to wind it up. Um, I just wanted to add that together with, well, in the Localism Act, there are three main community rights, and one of them is the community right to build, especially small scale housing. Uh, from community for communities and um, we have a lot of information both locality corps UK I'm sure and Plunke on our website about this come and talk to us at our stores if you want to know more uh, there are mechanisms now through very small neighborhood planning orders and, and yourselves running a neighborhood plan to actually get past the planning process and build your own houses or community centers so there's lots of information about this and um, I'm afraid uh, we, we do need to, to wind things up, especially as people are going to rush in from uh, upstairs. I hope you will recognise the two ladies here who will be by the Plunkett stall all day, and the two gentlemen from Hudswell who are so good, at, actually, they will spend 20 minutes with you talking about your project, they're so great, they don't mind sharing, and uh, organisations like, like ours, support organisations, always make sure you can go and visit uh, people like the Huswell Pub to learn more about how they've done it. Today is just to give you a flavour, we're aware time is running by, but uh, by all means it's not, it's considered as the, the start of bigger conversations. Thank you very much, I'm going to just usher you uh, down to lunch.